is here we're going to be doing something a little bit different today we've done some videos on some of the builds that we've done we've done explanations uh, of the builds that we've done in some of the videos and some shoot videos but we've never gone through the build process from start to finish and that's what we're going to be doing on this video uh, I am going to be doing a new build it's going to be a 300 blackout build and if you're somebody who's put together several AR builds before, you can probably go ahead and skip this video. But if you are brand new to building or you've never done a build before, you think you might want to try one, you kind of want to know what you're getting yourself into, what you're going to need. Hopefully I'll be able to help out some of those folks and hopefully keep you from or prevent you from making some of the same mistakes that I made in the first couple that I've done. And trust me, I did make a few. Uh, did make a few. Um, I am by no means an expert. I have successfully put together a few builds, actually one, two, four, five off the top of my head. This is going to be my sixth. So, uh, and I'm also going to be Cerakoting this. Um, funny story. I was watching a video on another channel and this is a channel that I actually really like, but they were going over some of the mistakes that newbies make. And one of the uh, mistakes that they pointed out was people who get, um, a little overboard with decorating or Cerakoting or whatever, but you know what? I really don't care. I'm going to Cerakote it anyway. It's my AR. I'm going to do what I want. So I am going to be Cerakoting this. I'm also going to go over that process, kind of go over what works for me, kind of how I do it, what you're going to need, what you're getting yourself into. Um, so let's go ahead and get into it. Um, if you're going to put an AR platform together, you're going to need a lower. This is an AR-15 lower. It is a strip lower. It's an Anderson lower. I actually picked this up for 39 bucks and change, including the uh, FFL transfer. Now, I'm probably not telling most of you anything you don't already know, but this is the only part of an AR platform that is considered to be a firearm, a, a excuse me, a firearm, or at least in the eyes of the ATF. This is the only part that you're going to need an FFL transfer for. Pretty much everything else you can have shipped straight to your door. This, you cannot. Um, my brother and I actually picked up one, uh, you know, each of us picked one of these up. Um, again, we got this locally at Fin, Feather, and Fur. That way we didn't have to pay shipping and the $25 FFL transfer. So um, this ran us um, right around $40 for the strip blower, okay? Um, I'm gonna keep track of kind of what everything's going to cost for the most part. You can certainly spend more on a lower if you want to. If you're one of those people who has unlimited disposable income, well, knock yourself out, spend as much as you like. If you're like me and you have a finite amount of disposable income and an even more finite amount to dedicate to projects like this, if you're brand new to building and this is your first build, I would recommend starting out with, you know, maybe an entry level kit. That way, if you mess something up, you're not out much. Um, you know, um, and again, uh, it, it's a T6 aluminum uh, stripped lower. Um, it's not top of the line, but it's not a POS anyway. So something like this, any garden variety uh, T6 aluminum lower uh, for an AR build anyway, will definitely get you started. And you can always upgrade moving forward. And like I said, this is going to be a 300 blackout build for me. These are multi-caliber. Um, you know, if you want to build a 5.56, 223, uh, 224 Valkyrie, 300 blackout. This um, lower, even though it, you know it's a 5.56 lower, you can build several calibers off of this this single lower. It is a multiple caliber lower. Okay, this is the upper kit that I got. I picked this up from 22 mods. 22 mods would actually be a good place to go to get your first build kit. You can get them at a reasonable price. They are somewhat entry level. Um, they sell um, entry level equipment. They also sell middle of the road and top of the line stuff as well. But I've mentioned this in another video. I've had really good luck with everything that I've got from 22 mods. So far, um, you know, worst case scenario, it has performed as expected, if not, uh, if not exceed my expectations. So 
um, in this upper uh, kit, the upper part of the kit anyway, it's gonna come with an M-lock. This is a 10 inch M-lock. Um, the barrel that I got on my 300 Blackout is a three and a, or, I'm sorry, a 10 and a half inch barrel, one and eight twist. But uh, it, your upper kit's gonna come with your M-lock. Uh, we're gonna go over how to put this all together later. First thing we're gonna do is kind of prep the Cerakote process. Obviously, you're gonna have to do that first. The upper kit is gonna come with your gas tube. This kit came with a pistol length gas tube. One of the reasons why I wanted to build this 300 Blackout is I've got a 30 cal suppressor on the way. I've actually got three suppressors on the way. Trust me, I'm gonna be doing videos on those. 300 Blackout is a very good caliber to suppress and we'll get into that a little bit more later. Um, it, it did come with a gas block. If you're gonna suppress uh, it may or may not be a good idea to get an adjustable gas block, but I'm going to go ahead and start, or this is the barrel nut, sorry, that's not the gas block, that's the barrel nut, we'll get into that later. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and start with the gas block that it came with, but I may upgrade and get an adjustable gas block. This is the flash hider uh, for the barrel, uh, put the gas tube over here. This is actually the gas block, that other piece was the uh, barrel nut, not the gas block. We're going to get into this a little bit more later. And this is the barrel it came with. Um, again, 10 and a half inch, one and eight twist. Um, did come with the flash hider, but um, the uh, 300 or the 30 cal suppressor that I got is a direct thread. It's gonna be spending a lot of time uh, on this barrel. Um, also, the upper kit comes with, of course, the stripped upper. Okay, we're gonna be Cerakoting this. Uh, and again, I'm gonna go through that process first. All right. This is the dust cover. In my opinion, this is probably one of the trickiest things to install, believe it or not, is the dust cover. Uh, we're gonna go over that here in just a little bit. Uh, you're gonna need some patience uh, putting the dust cover on. That can be just a touch tricky. And there's a couple things you can do to kind of simplify that whole process and the forward assist, um, which is eventually going to go uh, on the upper um, after we get done Cerakoting and setting everything else up. So this um, is the upper part of the kit and the stripped lower. Um, I've also got a lower kit coming. Um, I bought the bolt carrier group separately. I bought the charging handle separately the lower kit does come with a garden variety mill spec trigger. There is nothing wrong with a garden variety mill spec trigger. However, I happen to really like the uh, Rise Armament series of drop-in triggers. So I'm going to go over how you would install a garden variety mill spec trigger, and then we're going to go over the drop-in. You know, so you know you can do either one. There's nothing wrong with a mill spec trigger. I just think that you know a drop-in trigger, and, I, and again, I really like Rise Armament. I really like Rise Armament. It's a very simple upgrade to do. Whether you're doing a new build or you're upgrading an existing AR, putting a drop-in trigger uh, is very simple and it definitely drastically improves the shooting experience, at least in my opinion. Um, I also got um, some backup sights that we'll be installing. This will probably be one of the last things that we put on. Um, but that encompasses everything on the upper. Um, I'm going with a black and gold Cerakote theme, and I also got um, some Punisher uh, Cerakote stencil. So that's going to be a, a black and gold Punisher theme on the whole Cerakote project and process. And again, I am going to go over um, the Cerakote process, how I do it, everything you're going to need there, what you're getting yourself into. But the parts that I'm going to be Cerakoting are the stripped upper, the stripped lower, and the M-lock. Um, everything else I'm pretty much going to leave black, going to go ahead and leave it as is. Um, so, uh, with that, uh, let's uh, go ahead and get started. May as well start getting into the process. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get everything ready that we want to Cerakote. These are the three parts that I'm going to be Cerakoting. Uh, I'm going to be doing the stripped upper, the stripped lower, and the end lock. So, if you don't want to Cerakote, skip this part. I'm probably going to be breaking this video up into a few different 
um, smaller videos. So it's going to be kind of like a series. So we're going to go to the Cerakote uh, piece of this first, and then we'll get into the build part. So what you first want to do is you want to rough all of these up. Get a Scotch-Brite pad and scrub every bit of the surface that you want to Cerakote. What you want to do is you want to remove the shine from all the surface areas. Um, that's going to help the Cerakote uh, absorb into the material. Um, it's going to give you a much better finish. I'm not going to go into a ton of detail about this. I'm going to go ahead and assume that most of you know how to take a Scotch-Brite pad and rough something up. However, I will say this. Don't skimp on this part. Make sure that you're very thorough. Also, when you're doing, especially the M-Lock, if you're going to Cerakote this piece, make sure that you get in between um, all of these tight little spots. You might need to take a couple of different types of Scotch-Brite pads to get in all of those areas, but make sure you get all of these surface areas and make sure that you get it roughed up and make sure that there's no shine left on the surface um, uh, of anything that you're going to be adding the Cerakote to. So, again, not going to spend a ton of time on this. It's pretty straightforward, but take your Scotch-Brite um, and rough all of this up and that is going to be the first thing we're going to do. Uh, then after that, we're going to clean all of this off with a bunch of acetone. So again, not going to make you suffer through all this. I'm going to go ahead and assume that you guys know how to do this, but make sure you're thorough when you do it. Again, rough it all up with some scotch bright, scotch bright that is, and then rinse and repeat on all the rest of the parts. Okay, once you've got everything scotch brighted up, um, you, again, you want to make sure that everything's dull. You want to take off any bit of shine that's on the finish of everything that you're going to Cerakote. Also, if you wind up with some parts where it looks like the finish has been taken off. Don't worry about that. That's kind of what you're going for. The Cerakote is going to fill in um, all of those parts. So once we have everything scotch brighted, we got to clean this. I ran this under some water just to kind of get um, the bits of the scotch bright off of it to kind of get the chunks off. But you have to clean this in acetone. There's a couple of different ways that you can do it. Um, what I like to do, what I almost always do, is soak these in acetone. You can use 100% acetone nail polish. That works perfectly fine. You can buy a whole can of acetone at Walmart. I've seen videos where people will clean these off with brake fluid. And you can use brake fluid. That's perfectly fine. However, just spraying off these parts with brake fluid probably isn't going to get it done. You want to completely submerge them in acetone for about a minimum of a half an hour. Um, after we're done with that, we can pull these out, let them dry. We can go ahead and put on the stencils. Um, but again, um, it's not a bad idea to have a can of brake fluid because that way, if you have to get these out, handle them, especially when you put the stencils on, you can use the brake fluid to kind of touch up clean here and there but don't just spray these off um, with, um, you know, with a brake fluid spray. Make sure you completely submerge them um, in acetone, minimum of a half an hour. A uh, little bit longer is not going to hurt anything. You can go, uh, I raided the dollar store, pretty much emptied out every can of 100% uh, acetone nail polish, or not every can, but every bottle of 100% acetone uh, nail polish remover that they had. Then I went to Dollar General, did the same thing. You can get them on Amazon. Um, you, know, you can go get a big can of it at Walmart if you want to. Just make sure that you're using 100% acetone. Um, nail polish removal will get it done. And dump it in. Put this in a clean container. 
and make sure that you have enough that we can so we can completely submerge all of these parts and again we're going for a minimum of a half an hour you can possibly reuse this uh acetone if you want to um i wouldn't do it too many times um but you can reuse it if you want to use it to clean something else or if you've got another cerakote project going on um but what you're trying to do is you're getting rid of any surface any surface debris and also any surface oils most importantly what you don't want is any residual oil on here to get in the way of the Cerakote um, absorbing into the surface. After we Cerakote this, we're actually gonna put it in the oven at 180 degrees for a minimum of three hours, which kind of sets and hardens it and bakes it in. Um, so making sure that any oil um, or surface debris is removed from any of the surface area of all of the parts that you're going to be Cerakoting, very important. This is probably the most important step um, of the Cerakote process. Even if you don't scotch bright as well as you should, as long as you make sure that everything's clean on here, you're probably going to be okay. Um, so again, we're going to go ahead, soak these guys. Um, soak all of these parts, minimum of a three hours. Once that's done, we're going to pull these out, get them ready to hang, and get them ready for the Cerakote process. And then we're also going to put our stencils on. I'm going to put my uh, Punisher stencil on. There's one that's going to go on one side of the magwell, and then there's another one that's going to go on the opposite side of the M-lock. Um, let them soak, let them soak for a good half hour. Then we're gonna pull them out, let them dry. They dry off really fast. And then we'll be ready to start the uh, Cerakote process. Okay, so now we have roughed up the surface of everything that we're gonna Cerakote with the Scotch-Brite. It's been soaking in acetone probably for about 45 minutes. Again, half an hour should get it done. Put it in there for at least a half an hour minimum. Um, so now it's time to take these out. We're going to let them dry off a little bit. And then we're going to put the Cerakote stencils on them. So let's go ahead and get these guys out of here. Um, I'm going to put two stencils, um, on. They are Punisher stencils. Um, I'm going to put one, uh, on one side of the magwell and another one on the M-lock. You should, if you're gonna put these stencils on or handle these period, after you take them out of the acetone, you wanna have gloves on. However, I'm not very good at putting these stencils on when I have gloves on. So um, I'm just gonna go ahead and try and put them on without putting gloves on. That's where the brake fluid comes in handy because what I'm going to ultimately wind up doing is once I put the stencils on, I'm gonna, put, I'm gonna spray some brake fluid on there which should get rid of any residual oils that go on there from my hands. Um, but if you can do it, try, if you're gonna put stencils on, try and have gloves on when you do it. Um, it's always a good idea. The whole point of soaking these um, in the acetone, again, is to get rid of any residual oil and the oils from your skin can and will uh, mess up your Cerakote job. But, uh, since I'm not very good at putting these on and it's hard enough for me to put them on straight, I'm going to go ahead and leave the gloves off. So we've got um, two stencils. And if you're going to use stencils for your Cerakote job, you want to make sure that they are vinyl high heat stencils. Let me try that again. Vinyl high heat stencils is what I meant to say. Easy for me to say. There's a... Um, there's a few companies, uh, you know, there's a few websites you can find these online that sell these. They're pretty easy to come by. I mean, I got the Stormtrooper Cerakote um, uh, online. This one I think I got from Esty, uh, which is the Stormtrooper, or I'm sorry, the, the uh, Punisher stencil that we're going to be using. Um, this should fit perfectly on the M-lock. On this lower, the bottom part um, of the Punisher skull is going to dangle 
kind of down over um, you, you know the, the bottom of the magwell here it still should look fine uh, it's not going to fit perfectly unfortunately but it's still going to look good so um, when you put these on make sure you line everything up straight apply them on and then when you Cerakote we're going to let the Cerakote dry completely then we're going to put it in the oven at 180 degrees for a minimum of three hours. Leave the stencils on once you put them in the oven. Once they come out of the oven and they're dry, before you even think about trying to put um, any of this together, give it a minimum of 24 hours. I typically give it about two days, but you wanna let it cure for a minimum of 24 hours. So once you pull um, these out of the oven, and the curing process is basically done, you can go ahead and peel the stencils off then, but go ahead and leave them on, um, you, you know, even during the curing process. So we're gonna let this dry up a little bit. Um, good thing is acetone dries rather quickly. We're gonna go ahead and peel these bad boys off and put them on. Um, and again, I'm gonna go ahead, dip my hands in the acetone a little bit, at least kind of clean off um, some of the oils from my skin so it doesn't get on the aluminum. Kind of let that dry off for just a second. And if you are able to put these on wearing gloves, go ahead and do it. I just, I can never get these to go on correctly if I'm wearing gloves. So very carefully, we're going to peel our stencil off, line it up, and we're gonna put this first one on the magwell be very careful taking this off they will tear kind of easily especially on these thin parts at the bottom so just go bit by bit and if you get to a curve especially when i get down here towards the bottom part of the skull peel it off nice and slow nice and easy Try not to finger them as much as I am because you want them to stay sticky. They gotta stick on. Hey, get off there. There we go. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and peel that down. And that came off pretty much perfect. Just about one small little piece right there. I might have to just go ahead and leave that if it's gonna be. Yeah, we're gonna go ahead and leave that. So try as best you can not to touch the surface of what you're going to be putting this on uh, in my case it's going to be a little tough line everything up okay press everything down line everything up correctly and again, this is where the brake fluid is going to come in handy. Um, the bottom of the skull is going to, in my case, at least on the magwell, it's not going to do this on um, the side of the M-lock, but here on the magwell, it's going to dangle down just a little bit. It's going to go a little past um, the bottom piece here. Okay, go ahead and press everything on. Make sure that's flat. I'm gonna take probably an X-Acto knife and touch that up just a little bit. And again, before I Cerakote this, once I hang this up on the rack, I'm gonna go ahead and take a little bit of brake fluid and clean off any residual oils that may have gotten on this from my hands. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and finish that stencil up. Okay, got that put on, that one put on the magwell. Okay, that's lined up pretty good. There's a couple of parts of this that I'm gonna need to trim up a little bit. Um, the left side of the nostril, I'm gonna take a little X-Acto knife and take that little piece off of here. And there's a little piece that's dangling off of the other part of the skull that I'll need to remove. Um, but it went on really smooth. Just make sure when you put these on, it's completely flat and it's completely smooth 
And then once we Cerakote this over, like I said, you're gonna wanna put it in the oven, let it cure. Um, and then once you pull it out of the oven, um, you can go ahead and pull it off once it's out of the oven, or you can give it the 24 hours to completely cure, but then you can go ahead and pull it off and you should be fine. So that is basically how we're gonna put the stencil on. All right, put this one aside. So I want this other, um, Punisher stencil to be on the opposite side of the magwell. Okay. Um, let's see how this is going to fit. Maybe. Yeah, I think this is going to fit just fine. Put it right there. Or would it be better on the upper? Uh, you know what? Eh, let's go ahead and put it on the magwell. Why not? So, um, we're gonna have one Punisher decal on this side of the mag on this side of the magwell, and the same Punisher stencil on the opposite side of the M lock here. So again, I'm gonna start peeling this off very carefully. Perfect. Okay. Now, this one's going to need to dry up just a little bit. There's a little bit of acetone right there. I'm going to go ahead and let that dry um, before I go put this on. The tricky part is lining these up uh, and making sure, especially at this bottom part with the bottom part of the skull, it's going to be a little tricky. As long as I get this first part on straight, the rest of it should go on without an issue. This is on a kind of a curve, so I'm going to have to kind of do this in stages. So we're going to put this on at the top. Go ahead and press that down. All okay. right. Make sure that lines up. Make, oh, that went on perfect. Outstanding. Okay. Going to go ahead and press this on. Again, if you can do this with gloves, try and wear gloves if you can. Um, that way, there's no additional cleanup that's needed or no additional acetone cleaning that's going to be necessary after you put these on. Um, I, I just cannot, uh, I cannot put these on correctly if I have gloves on. But if you can do it, go ahead and wear gloves, okay? I'm going to press that guy on. All right. And then once we get this out on the rack and we're getting ready to Cerakote it, we're gonna spray it off with a little bit of brake cleaner and then we'll be ready to do the Cerakote process. So there is the second Punisher stencil on the side of the M-lock. So now all we gotta do is take these out, hang them on the rack, wait for the acetone to completely dry and then we'll be able to re we'll be ready to uh, start the Cerakote process. All right, let's go get these ready. I'm gone. I'm gone. I'm gone.